I'm six years old in my school playground with other children playing a game of hide and seek. I'm looking for them in the trees and bushes. <gasps> Found them! <laughs> Wait, why are they huddled together, giggling, with their backs turned and glancing at me? We don't want to play with you. You're weird. I cried when they said that. Why are they calling me weird? <laughs> I'm 10 years old, and I have found my answer. I'm taken to Edinburgh Sick Kids, and I'm diagnosed with high-functioning autism. I'd never heard of the word autism or what it meant. Thankfully, my parents managed to explain it to me in a way that a 10-year-old can digest. They said, Rachel, it's OK. You just learn differently. And little did I know that getting my diagnosis was only the beginning. There are 52,718 people in Scotland who have autism, like me. That's 1% of the population. So now, like, let's take that into this audience, right? So the two front rows of you in front of me have autism. So the good news is, I'm not alone here today. Oh, thank God. <laughs> I am now a young adult with five standard grades, two hires, a business administration qualification, and enthusiasm to show the world what I can do. Even with good qualifications, it is hard to get a job. It is even harder when you're autistic. Employers don't see that there are positives such as super attention to detail, intense focus on tasks, and excellent timekeeping skills. I am determined in overcoming challenges too. That's the key thing here. I need to convince employers to look at the positive aspects of autism and to not see it as a barrier. I feel anxious telling someone I'm autistic, but I shouldn't have to hide it Autism is part of who I am, and the world needs to embrace it, because I am part of this world, too. When I started job hunting, I went for roughly 10 interviews, and when I explained I was autistic, the person interviewing me would often look very confused. Rejections really hurt. 10 hurt even more. I would take them as a personal attack for being autistic, and it was hard to get up and try again. And it wasn't until I went to an advice service called East Lothian Works in Haddington that I received interview practice. And with their help, I applied for a modern apprenticeship at Visit Scotland. And you know what? I got the job to sell my country to the world. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just to say it was very cold in that rock, so you know. <laughs> Something to note for the future. <laughs> I am now one of the 15% of people with autism in the UK that are fully employed. So remind me, like two front rows that I referred to earlier, a handful of you have a job. Show your hands if you agree that 15% is too low. Mm -hmm. Correct answer. <laughs> The way in which people see autism is often negative, with people believing what they see in the media and the classic stereotypes. We are geniuses, rude, inappropriate, antisocial, and don't conform with normal society, according to the media. <laughs> Please forget this. We view and experience the world in different ways. No two people on the spectrum are the same. As I'm high-functioning, I can experience life the same way as someone who isn't autistic, but I struggle with communication, understanding body language, and processing information. I love making routines, but a downside to that is I find it hard to adapt if something unexpected happens. I also take things what people say to me very literally and don't understand jokes and sarcasm, but that's not to say I don't have a sense of humor. I do. You've just got to be really funny to make me laugh. Like I said, being autistic has its advantages, but it also has its drawbacks. 
I have three unforgiving evil personas, anxiety, isolation, and meltdown. Together, these three form the supervillain team, AIM. So what kind of effect do they have on me? Well, anxiety loves to make me fear the unknown. She makes me overanalyze the situation or worry about what's going to happen next. I can obsess over the worst possible outcomes. Isolation makes me choose to spend time alone rather than engage with my friends and family. I need to take every opportunity offered, even if it feels alien at first. Meltdown rarely appears, thank God. But when she does appear, she doesn't allow me to keep my emotions in check. So we all remember Beast from the East, that freak snowstorm that blasted its way through Scotland a couple of months ago, right? Yeah? Well, when I went to Edinburgh Waverley from work, I discovered that all of my trains home back to North Berwick were cancelled. So I started to panic, <laughs> as I felt I had no one to turn to for help. I felt so overwhelmed, I didn't even care I was crying in public. I had effectively allowed AIM, anxiety, isolation, and meltdown, to take control. I stood crying in the middle of the station in this horrible state for 15 minutes, and no one noticed. What happened next was brilliant, yet unexpected. A woman in the station noticed I was upset and came over to talk to me. Let's just for this sake call her Anne. I told her that I was autistic, and she explained to me it was okay, and suggested trying the buses or staying with a friend. Aim's power started to weaken. <laughs> there we go, that's my throwing skills right there. <laughs> it was as though the dark clouds had suddenly disappeared, and the sun had come out. I am very grateful for what Anne did for me that day, because it helped me calm down and think very clearly about what I needed to do next to get home safely. I hope the acronym, AIM, helps other people. People with autism understand what they're experiencing, and for you to be aware of how we feel. Small acts of kindness can make a difference. It can be as simple as offering somebody a cup of tea and talking to them about their day, just as my colleagues at Visit Scotland do for me. <laughs> and it's thanks to the help and support of these people, you know, my friends, family and colleagues, from, and obviously strangers, all the support, especially from my parents who are in the audience today. Today, I have achieved my dream of talking about autism. People with autism are a different normal. People with autism are a different normal. We want to make a difference in today's society, and we should be allowed to do that. We shouldn't face rejection from jobs because of our autism. We shouldn't face isolation from society because of our autism. My challenge to you when you leave here today is to think about what difference you can make. Can you take a moment of kindness to show to somebody who's anxious or feeling very, very unwary of what's happening? Or what impact can you make to the employment of people with autism? Don't shut us out. Let us in. Let's all make a difference to our society and shake off those negative stereotypes about autism. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha!